All right. Hey, everyone. Okay. So, well, first off, welcome to the team call. Yay. So glad to see you guys. Um, my little man's kind of crabby, so we'll see how, we'll see how well he, do, he does here. Um, so I have an important topic to talk about. It's actually called important over urgent. Um, see how well he does. So, oh, I know, I hear you. I started having a cold yesterday and, or I thought it was allergies, but I don't know if it was or not. So, um, excited. So we are 11 days into October and, you know, our, our goal every single month is to, you know, find at least three people, if not more, that want to get on a health style journey or, help in their finances or help themselves emotionally. So we have all these things that we can help give this gift for, which is amazing. Um, but our challenge group started on Monday. People are more than welcome to hop in. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really excited for the end of this, this year. We have Core to Force, which is launching. Uh, Alex, do you have the specific date? I thought it was supposed to launch the end of this month, and then someone was saying that it wasn't supposed to launch until November. So, Quarter Force is going to be a huge launch for us. I'm very excited for it. Um, I can't wait. But, anyways, okay. So, we are talking about time. Who loves to talk about time, right? Because we all don't have time to talk about time, right? Here, you want to sit and see? You want to see everybody? Is that what you want? Um, okay. Whether it's coaches or challengers or people, I mean, I'm sure you guys have family members and friends that, you know, whenever you're like, Hey, how's everything going? And they're like, I'm busy. And you're like, yeah, aren't we all busy? Don't you love that term busy? I hate the word. <laughs> There's not a lot of things that I hate, and I, I, I don't really like excuses, and I don't like the words, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Well, we all have things that go on in our life, and the thing that I want to talk about is a little bit about when you guys are doing your time, because we all do have life that goes on. You know, we have families, or we have another job, or we have activities that we do, and we can't spend all day, every day on our business as much as some of us might like to do that because we love to help people and talk to people. We don't have the time for that. And so we really have to focus our time. I don't like calling it um, time management because we can't manage our time. Our time, the time always stays the same. It goes on this, you know, 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 24 hours. It's the same thing over and over. It's never going to stop for us. It's never going to get faster. It's never going to slow down. So what we have to do is we have to focus our time and do things that are important over urgent. So, you know, people say that they don't have time or they, for this or that, or they, they don't, they're just too busy that they can't do something. And that's not true. That's an excuse that I hear from people, and I want to tell you guys that over and over. It's an excuse because we make time for the things that are important in our life. We have to make time for the things that are important in our lives. You know, it's, it's something that's crucial, and it's not just, I'm not talking about the business-wise. I mean, I'm talking about family. I'm talking about this and that. When you say you don't have time for things, no. There was something else that took place that could have took place of that. It's about making those sacrifices. And it's funny when, when you have, there was something that I heard in our um, personal development book when I was listening to it, You're a Badass. And it talked about how it's so funny that when you get a deadline set, you usually get everything done before that deadline, right? So if you're at work and they're like, hey, you've got six months to finish this project. How long does it take you to get it done? usually takes you six months. There's not a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm going to do it in one month and be done. No, it'll take you six months to get it done. Just the same as homework. I'm sure kids can relate, right? You've got a week to do this, this homework project. It's going to take them a week to get it done. You change that date on them and you're like, hey, it's two days. You got to do it. What are they going to do? They're going to get it done in two days. The same amount of work in two days done 
as they would have in a week. And it's because we set these deadlines for ourselves or we set these, um, you know, these artificial deadlines or uh, let me bring it to somebody who works because both of you guys work, right? So um, let's say you're going to take off a Thursday and Friday. And if you have this, the, all these things that need to be done, what ends up happening? You get the same amount of work or everything that you need to get done Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday so that you can have Thursday, Friday off. So it's about how we focus our time and how we set it. So when we have time limits for things, what happens is it makes us more efficient and it makes us way more effective. So there's three things that I want to talk to you guys about um, how we can kind of stay focused towards our times and things that can help us and things that I've known that have worked and like today I did it because I'm like, you know what, I'm talking on it, then we're gonna do this. So set artificial deadlines. So we set them because we don't have all day to do it. When I talk about power hour, there are days that I'll go on, I know exactly what I need to do for a power hour, but I will not set a timer. Let me tell you, those days seem like they last forever and I didn't get anything done. So setting that artificial timer, today what I did, I was like, same thing that I would do when I get on a power hour call. Set my timer. 10 minutes. And for 10 minutes, I will stay focused in exactly what I need to do. And then again, I'll set another 10 minutes and I'll go exactly what I need to do. And if I need to get up and I'm like, all right, you know what? I did 30 minutes of work, but I need to just get up and go around or do something. Like if I need to clean, then I'll set 30 minutes for my cleaning and I'll do nothing but clean for 30 minutes until my timer's done. And then I can go back. And the reason that we do that is when we know that we have a limited amount of time or we have deadlines, then we have to get the stuff done that we need to get done. And setting those deadlines too, it makes you delegate things that you should not be doing. It makes you say no to things that you should not be doing. And it makes you make faster decisions all day long. Like for me, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to go through and follow up with people for 10 minutes long. So what did I do? I had my list ready to go and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going through there. I wasn't scrolling my newsfeed. I wasn't checking in on this other page because that's what will happen to me. And a lot of people actually will have that happen too, is if you don't set your timer or you don't set deadlines, like, okay, I'm only going to do this for... Um, 15 minutes long, or I'm only going to do this for 30 minutes long. If we don't set that, we end up squirreling off. Most people do. I know I do. So setting that timer will help you accomplish those things and stay focused and everything. And, and we need to, we need to say, we need to say no to the things that shouldn't be done. So scrolling Facebook, maybe, maybe, maybe playing along on a, on a Facebook game. Who does that, right? We're all sitting here laughing. Um, anyways, so I'm completely convinced that when we do set times and when we do set deadlines, that it helps me stay more productive. And what it does is it actually frees up my time and lets me put energy and focus and effort into places that I value the most. So what do I value the most? And let's talk about, let's talk about like important over urgency. So what's important? Important is us, you know, let's bring this to, okay, someone who really wants to build a team or wants to give this opportunity to other people. Their urgency might be, hey, go reach out to new people, which we do need to reach out to new people. But you know what's important is working on our vital behaviors. So making sure that we're doing our workouts, that we're drinking our Shakeology, that we're filling ourselves up and fueling our bodies with the proper nutrition and um, personal development. Those things are important. Those are what's important. Those things should be done before you're going to reach out to new people because sometimes we can just lose so much focus in what we're doing because we're trying to help so many other people. So there's a difference between something that's important and something that's urgent. Same thing with, you know, um, hey, I, 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 want, I want to bring on a new coach this month or whatever. 
Well, you have other coaches that are running it. You have other challengers that are needing your help. Important is following up with those that are doing the work. And the things that are urgent would be to bring on new people. Does that kind of make sense there between like doing the stuff that's important versus what's urgent? Like it's not saying that those things aren't, you know, can't be done, but you need to do the things that are important first. Um, think about this too. How many of you guys have kids or animals? Um, housework. Let's talk about housework. Who loves to clean? No one. Yeah, we're out of our mind. I was actually just giving uh, an example to my son today too. I was like, I was like, you know, I was like, I don't know if you think that it's like fun to clean or whatnot. And I was like, I don't even think people that get paid to clean. I mean, God, you know, has people that, that clean and get paid for it, but I really don't think that they like to do it because if they do, that's crazy. But anyways, I guess, you know, I guess there is people that do it. But back to it was, um, if you think of housework, you know how we're cleaning, like, and we're like, we're going to do it until it's all done. It's never all done. Because we do something, we clean it, and then all of a sudden, two seconds later, you got one of your kids running around behind you that just completely messed up that whole room over again. Right? So, it's, it's like destroyed. So that's why we set ourselves time frames versus being like, okay, I'm going to get all this done first before I do something else, or I'm going to get this done. Because... He's been so fussy today. Um, just what you need to say is we're going to do this much. And then what it's going to do is free us up with our time. And that's the same way that you need to do with this business or it will drive you crazy. You'll think like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm working this and this and this and this and this. And that's not what this business is about. This business is about freeing up your free time for your family, helping you become financially stable, helping you work on your health and fitness, and then helping other people accomplish all those same goals. So I don't want you guys working for 12 hours a day, you know? Are you going to do hard work? Absolutely, yes. If you want to build this, if you want to grow this, and if you want something that can bring in six figures or seven figures in a year, yes, yeah, still put in hard work. But the more you stay focused on the basics and staying focused towards the important things versus what's urgent, that's what's going to grow not only your business, but yourself. So set your time frame for when you do things. Okay, I'm working this 30 minutes, and after 30 minutes, I am going to do this for this long or whatever it may be. But I like to set my increments in 10 minutes long at a time when I do power hours because I do. I'll get, if I'm like, oh, I'm going to do 15 minutes of this and I don't set my timer and I'm like totally off in a different world. I have to do 10 minutes. I'm a squirrel. I can't help it. No wonder they get hit all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> number one. So like I said, set artificial deadlines for yourself. Same thing with like accomplishing your goals and stuff too. Like, hey, I'm going to do this by this. It just pushes us more to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. So number two, be ruthless. Be ruthlessly selective in your yeses. You're going to be like, what? Okay. So <laughs> what I mean by that is that there's these awesome people that love to do so many things that they say yes to everything and they don't know how to say no to a dang thing. And that's not what you want to do. I'll tell you this. I heard this great quote and it says the best leaders do not do or the best leaders do not do more. The best leaders do more of what matters the most. And that's very important with being a leader and running your own business and running your, even your own home. It's not that we do more like moms. We don't do more things. We just do more of what matters the most, right? Can you relate? I can. So you need to invest your energy into what matters the most. So you can't say yes to everything and expect to receive your best yes. You can't say yes to, I mean, sometimes you have to say no to a lot of good things to say yes to that one great thing. 
So and this is something that I heard. It said the barrier to a meaningful life is not what you are not committed to. Or the, what he was saying was that the barrier to a meaningful life is that most people are committed to way too much and they're overcommitted to things versus being committed to things that matter the most. Um, so busy, busyness does not equal productivity. You guys, like I said, people are like, oh, I'm busy. That doesn't mean that they're being productive. That doesn't equal that it's being meaningful. It doesn't equal that it's fulfillment in life. So the things that we need to say yes to need to be selective. And this, again, doesn't just go in your guys' business area. This goes in your family's lives as well, too, you know? Um, and that's, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys to go say no to your children, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that, you know, when, when you're saying yes to something else that doesn't involve them, you know, is, is that going to equal up to more productivity for you? Does it equal meaning to you? Is it fulfillment in your life? You have to look at these things and put them, I like to say, put them on that scale. And that's what I did with my weight loss. You know, I was like, okay, am I going to eat all this crap and junk and food and this and that and like, you know, possibly be loaded up in diseases and all this other stuff? Or am I going to be that mother that's going to be there for their children? Nothing was going to overpower that because that outweighed anything else that I wanted to put in my body. I quit smoking. I quit eating that junk. It was a step-by-step -step process, but I did it because they were more meaningful and purposeful to me than shoving my face with addictions. So um, one thing that I did here too, I think it was on one of the wake up calls and they were talking about how instead of creating a to-do list, cause we do have, you know, our power hour of things that to do, but create a list of what you don't need to do or what you shouldn't do. It sounds crazy, but it's like, okay, um, creating lists like I'm not, or I'm going to quit. I should say it calling a quit list. You know, I'm going to quit watching this episode of TV so that I can work my business so that I can grow it and give the light, the life that my family deserves. So, you know, what? I'm going to sacrifice that time because it's not meaningful to me. It's, I mean, it's entertainment and it's fun and we need time for ourselves, but is it giving you productivity? Is it something that's valuing and fulfillment in your life? So, and that was something I gave up all my television shows to, um, to work my business and that way I could be with my family and I was doing school and everything as well too. So I had to decide what was more fulfilling in my life. And I wanted a life to live by design. I wanted a life where I can be at home with this little man and be on calls with them, right? Even though you're crabby, even though you're kind of crabby, I think he's hungry. That's why. Guess what? It won't be too long. So, <laughs> um, but that's what I wanted more than I wanted to watch a television show. Um, so the most successful people say no to a lot of good things, like I said, in order to say yes to the great things that are in their life. So that's number two. So number one, again, is, I lost my train of thought. Number one is setting um, deadlines, you know, setting artificial deadlines for yourself for the things in your life. Number two is being ruthlessly selective in your yeses. And number three is do what matters most. Do what matters most. So do that first. And like I said, what matters most, like bringing it back to the challengers and everything. Yes, we want to reach new people and we do need to reach new people. But what's important is for us to reach if you have challengers or if you have coaches. And I want to say if you have coaches that are giving you what you're giving them. Because this is something that I had to learn it was hard for me to learn because I'm a pearl. If you guys have done the Danny Johnson things or um, the color systems or what Josh Coates, he has a very quick video on it and he calls it the animal. Well, I'm a golden retriever and I want to help anybody and everybody. And I see the potential in anybody and everybody and I don't want to let them go. So I'm like, 
come on, let's do this. So I'm giving more effort into other people when I'm not getting the effort back. And so I had to learn, okay, you know what? I'm going to work with the willing, right? We can't drag a horse to water. I mean, we can drag a horse to water, but we can't make them drink it. That's the same way it's going to be with your coaches and your challengers. Yes, check up on them. Yes, help them if you can. But if they're like not responding to you, you kind of just got to give it up until they're ready for it. And it sucks. But so like I said, reach out to your coaches, reach out to your challengers and help them. And, and then also share that on your Facebook. And I think that's going to create more of an attraction for people to come to you that are like, wow, wait a minute, she's helping people. She's doing this or, you know, he's doing that. Maybe I want to do this too. That's another little kind of piece of nugget that, that can help you out versus like constantly reaching out to new people, have them start coming towards you. So how do you have time to do the things that you do? I get asked that question all the time. They're like, I don't know how you do it, Ashton. I, I really don't know how to do it. I mean, you tell me your schedule, it's this and that and this and that, because being a stay-at-home mom is not, what people think it is. It's not like I have the luxury to do m my business all day long. Absolutely not. I'm a taxi cab. I um, run like three or four different places. Like it's, it's, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you guys can, some of you guys can relate, relate to this. So it's not what people think it is. They think, oh, you're, you're a stay at home mom. You know, you can run this business, like whatever. I'm like, do you even know how many kids I have run at my house? I'm like, it's not on one hand. And um, do you know the commitment of different things that they have for this and this and that and this? And oh, there's like three or four schools that they go to. And I have a little one too. And yeah, anyways. So they're like, how do you do what you do? Let me tell you the biggest secret. How do I work out every single day? How do I run to the store and run my business and do everything with my kids and do all this other stuff. It's because I put those things on the calendar first. I do the things that matters the most. I put the things that I need to do on the calendar because it's valuable to me because it's, but it's important to me. I'm not going, you know, I'm not going to respond to everyone else until I first have done the things that God wants me to do. I put my priorities first. This business is a priority for me because it's going to provide the life that my children deserve. It's going to provide even more freedom in our life. It's going to provide a house that I want because that's like the number one thing on my list is to get out of this house. And um, there's just, Again, it's, it's, I have to put it down. Same way with your guys' workouts, right? Like people are like, oh, you're rocking your workout every day. I can't work out. I couldn't do an, I, I couldn't do a workout. I'm not a morning person or man, I'm already too tired at night. No, you know what? I put that on my calendar because I don't want to, again, I want to prevent diseases if I can in my life. It's important for me to take care of the body that God gave me because that's what I want to do, right? I want to be healthy. I want to show my children to live a healthy lifestyle. I don't want them to, you know, be, be an obese child, be in that statistic and everything. So I do the things that matter the most first. And that's because I put them on the calendar. So the same way that you guys put things on your calendar, you know, you have a date night with your spouse or you've got an event with your family, you put a time on this calendar for your business. You set the time that you need to for this business if that is what you want. He's like falling asleep. Sorry. He's like, I'm out. Um, so you put your priorities first and that's what you need to do. And like I said, if, if you're like, Ashton, I want to grow this. I want to make six figures. I want to make seven figures. And let me tell you, Beachbody does not guarantee any level of success, but I can throw so many people there that, that have put in that hard work and in two years they're there. Isn't that crazy? And someone taking four years to go through a school to like work 40 hours or 40, 60 hours a week and not, you know, live paycheck to paycheck or work your butt off helping people and focusing on your goals. And in two years you could possibly bring this to over six figures a year. 
Hmm. <laughs> you make the decisions in your life by what you feel your priorities are, by what you feel is valuable. You have to choose your time for what you choose the time. How do I want to say this? You choose to have time for what you have time for. That's what I'm going to say. You will find it. People will find the time and make the time for things that they want to in their life when they want to, right? You know, you want to, you want to go on vacation. What do you do? You make the time for it. You don't have the time for it. You just make the time for it. So you choose to have time for what you have time for. And hopefully since all of you guys are on here, that, you know, the business is a part of that, right? So you can have excuses or you can have progress, but you can't have both. You guys can write that down if you want to, because it's something that's very important that not a lot of people understand. You can have excuses or you can have progress, but you can't have both. There are no excuses for the things that are important in your life. Your family, your faith, this business. So doing those vital behaviors for yourself come first. The four vital behaviors are going to be important. The number one thing to do. And that your power hour that we have, the, the business activity tracker, what does that consist of? The four vital behaviors. That's it, pretty much. Besides posting out on your social media or whatever, but... Pretty much if you look at the BAT, it's recogni recognition, it's doing your workout in Shakeology, it's inviting new people, whether it's to the challenge or to, you know, coaching, and it's personal development. It's all on that business activity tracker. Those are what is going to be important in this business versus what's urgent. Don't overcomplicate it. That's, the, that's one of the biggest things that people do is they overcomplicate it. And it's very basic and simple. Why? Because I get really excited when I talk to people about um, joining the challenge group or I get really excited about talking to people about coaching and I really want them to do it. Why? Because I've seen the way my life has changed and I wouldn't take it back for a heartbeat. It's made so many changes in my life that I'm so thankful and grateful for. Like I know God places in my life because I wouldn't know him. I don't think if it wasn't for this business, I grew in confidence. I grew to go to the, to go to a church and, and just, and it was inspiring to hear other coaches talk about their faith. So I'm like, Oh, I'm curious about this, you know? So I know what this can do for people and I want people to experience that. So it's, hey, I know if they do this, it's going to work. It's not some magic pill and it's not an, a wrap that goes on your stomach. It's hard work and it's dedication and it's, it's life-changing though. So I'll say it over again. If somebody works on their health and fitness, they focus on their nutrition and they're working out for 30, sec or 30 seconds, oh gosh, <laughs> Help us, Lord, if we all have one of those, then we might be, gosh, Beachbody will be in like insane. We'll be, we'll be the number one hit for sure. 30 seconds every day. Woo. <laughs> so if people work out for 30 minutes a day and focus on their nutrition, is it going to better their life? Yes or no? Right? If they plug into a personal development book for 10 minutes a day, or if they're listening for 10 minutes a day, is that going to better somebody's life? Yeah. If people are lifting up other people and being lifted up themselves, is it going to better their life? Yes. And is it going to, could it better somebody's life by reaching out to people that you would never meet? like building new relationships, like all of a sudden you build these new relationships and you see how you can help somebody yet, somebody and yet they're there to help you too. Like making more connections in life, like you just never know where the connection can lead to. That's going to better people's lives.
So if all those things can better people's lives, then why is it that some people are so afraid to offer this opportunity to people? I don't know. So it's something to remind yourself of over and over and over. And when people tell you no, it doesn't mean no forever. It just means it might not be the right time. But I also dig a little bit because I'm like, am I not like explaining this value to you? Like, do you not understand the things that you can do in your life for this? Like, I mean, I don't actually go that way to it, but I'm just like, what do you want in your life? Where do you see yourself? Are you achieving that now? And just going into more in-depth questions about it. But that is pretty much what I have for you guys for tonight. Like I said, I didn't want it to, to overtake your night. I would like these calls to try to stick to, you know, 30 minutes. And, and that way you guys have time to do the things that are important for your life. Um, as far as anything that we talked about, do you guys have any questions? I would like to leave it open for questions, too, if you are curious about anything or, um, yeah. Do you need unmuting? Here, I'll... I unmuted you, Tina. You looked like you were looking for something to unmute. Well, no. <laughs> I was just reading Alex's comment that oh. he, he was worried about the people that feel pressured when they set a time limit, and how do you get by that? Okay, so... What about those who start feeling pressured when you're setting time limits? You know, and I've learned that, like, cleaning the house, like you, I set a, a timer for 15 minutes, spend it on the bedroom. What I don't get done will be there tomorrow. Right. And then you move to the next thing. There are times where you got to finish something, but then you got to remember you got to leave yourself enough time. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, it's. As far as, I mean, setting time limits, like, I know that you, you have that Emerald personality, so you would think that setting time limits would be great for you, but um, I don't know. It's something that you're going to have to conquer, like, you know, you're going to have to just try it out and see how it goes, because I know for me, like I said today, I set my time limit. I was like 10 minutes at a time and then I just do that specific task until it's done instead of being like, oh, I need to get 5, 10, 15 of this done or I need to do this. And I mean, or if I, there's days where I'm just like, okay, I know what I need to do. So I'm going to sit down and do it and then I'll start to do it. And what happens is, is since I don't have a time limit on it or a timer, I'm like, oh, what that person say? Or wait a minute, here's a group. Let me check in this group again. Oh, wait, I forgot I got to send this out. So I completely get distracted with all these other things that are going on, and I don't accomplish. I, I'll, I'll, I'll know those days because I don't accomplish the stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. And that's, that's what happens. Our mind, you know, our mind is our greatest disability. So we get sucked into so many other things that when I'm like, okay, I'm putting a timer on it for 10 minutes, I, I need to stay focused and do the things that I need to do it for. Now, if it's something where like you feel pressured as far as like, okay, I've got, I want to follow up with 20 people and I know that I can't do that in 10 minutes, then set yourself 10 minutes, do what you can, and then set yourself another 10 minutes for the same thing. But I feel like setting that time it makes you laser focused on those things that you need to get done. So I don't know if that kind of helps you out, Alex, but um, also for me too, it's like, messages there used to be I remember I want to say last year it was I would have a hundred messages sitting in my my inbox and I never felt pressured to have to accomplish them all or whatever why because if it takes me four days to get back to people it's gonna take me four days to get back to people but I did have to learn for one I don't check my notifications I know a lot of you guys know that right my notifications will be at 99 plus why because I have my favorite groups on the left. Um, let me actually see if I can pull this up here. I have my favorite groups on the left, so all I need to do is to check into those certain groups. I have people know that they can get a hold of me on my Facebook by messages or on my timeline 
or they can text me or call me. So if somebody's tagging me in something and they're not putting it on my timeline, I don't see it. I just don't. And it's because it's not, it's something that's not going to be that important or valuable to me because people know how to get a hold of me. And I, I mean, I embedded that in my head when Scotty Hobbs brought that out when he's like, I don't check notifications because all they are is this little blinging light that sends distractions to your life. So unless I accidentally hit my notifications on accident, it says 99 plus because I don't check it. Because the only thing I need to do is I need to go, I have all my favorite groups over here. And some of these I don't even check in them every single day. I just don't. Um, but I will check on the ones that I need to check on to. So all these notifications are good. So if something pops up in there, I'll check it. Um, my messages, I check. They can get a hold of me. <clears throat> on my actual timeline. So people can tag me on my timeline on things here. But, and then I can check that because I always have pending things because um, I don't let people just post whatever they want. I can... I want to make sure I keep that on track. Or they text me or call me. So if you guys were to tag me in a post on the, the team page, I'd see that because I go through the team stuff. Um, as far as uh, like the bigger teams, I probably won't see that. So, but the whole thing is that if somebody really wants to get my attention, they're going to message me. They'll end up messaging me. Otherwise, it's not that important. Um, that was just kind of a side, side note for you guys or whatever, because what I used to do is I used to go in my notifications and pull up new tabs for all these things that people were tagging me in or this or that. And I would, and I would respond to them all and it took so much time. And I guess back to where I was going with that is with your, with your messages, I don't start from bottom to top. I'll, I'll do unread messages and then I will scroll through to be like, okay, I know that I need to follow up with this person. Okay, this is a coach. I need to talk to them. Oh, this is a challenger. I better talk to them. Because before I was starting at the bottom and making sure that I got a hold of everybody on the time that they needed to be a hold of. And I'm like, and that's kind of the whole urgency versus the important. So I want to make sure I get to my challengers or my coaches. And I want to make sure that I follow up with people that need to be followed up with. If it's something that I don't need to get to, or it can wait, I don't need to respond to them today too. It doesn't matter, it's not a big deal. I don't have to respond to somebody every single day. Even if I'm on Facebook, I don't need to respond to them. So <clears throat> I hope that, that that kind of helps Alex and uh, everybody else. I hope, you know, oh my gosh. Oh, I just saw your pile, or you said your pile of clothes, Becca. I just folded uh, five, or I folded five, things of clothes today. I listened to two national wake up calls today. That's how much closing I did. So yeah, it was, it was like 30 minutes of, cause I usually, I skip past all the stuff that I don't need to listen to on the national wake up call and everything. But yeah, I listened to two national wake up calls today and yep, folded my clothes. <laughs> so, um, Anyways, I hope that that helps you guys a lot. You know, like I said, I, I want you guys to stay more focused time and, um, and do the things that are important versus the things that are urgent and help this free up your guys' time. I know a lot of you guys, you know, you want that. So just, just remember those things. Stay focused. Um, always coming back to your why. And like I said, you know, if you've got to remind yourself of that quote, best leaders do not do more. The best leaders do more of what matters. So do the things that matter the most and that are important and valuable in your life. And that's how you'll know what you're doing with your time. So if you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to tell you guys to have an amazing night. And yeah, we will we'll talk to you guys later. Hey, Ashton, can I talk to you a little bit? Yeah. Before you... And it, it's, I just have some questions I need to set up.